Hey guys, so for a while now I've been in the market for a good video editing laptop and nearly every forum or YouTube video I've watched all talk about the MacBook Pro. Now, I'm not into the whole Apple ecosystem and honestly, I don't really want to start now. So I've done some digging and I came across the Asus Pro Art 16. Now, I'm one of those people that before I buy a product, I go to dive deep into those reviews, looking at all the pros and cons, the specs, the usability, the build quality, you know, all that good stuff. But mostly all the reviews I found out there, especially on YouTube, heavily talk about specs and capabilities. But not many show any real long-term experiences and actually using it every day. So, in this video I'm going to share with you my review of this unit, using it nearly every day for the last four months. And before you ask, and I'm sure you can tell by the quality of this video, I'm just starting out, so it's not a sponsored video. I paid for this with my own hard-earned cash, and to be honest, I was very reluctant to part with it. So I'll start with why I chose the Pro Art 16. Now I didn't want to be tied to a PC because I work away a lot and I need to be able to edit when I'm away. So it had to be a laptop. I've just started out in the world of YouTube and before, I was editing using the Surface Pro and quite quickly I started hitting its hardware limitations. It was constantly crashing and freezing and the lag was just ridiculous. I mean it's a great laptop but it's not really designed for that sort of use. So I needed something a bit more powerful that could handle multi-layered editing with S-Log footage, text layers, transitions, B-roll content, you know, all that good stuff. As well as putting out quick renders, because honestly, with the Surface Pro, a 10 minute video took nearly 4 hours to render. And you know what no one tells you about editing content? It's time consuming. Like I'm new to this, so it takes me a full day just to chop through the footage, put it all together and do all the editing side of things. So speed is important to me on a laptop. Now I won't dive too deep into the specs of this laptop, but I'll give you the main ones that were a big influence on my decision in going for this laptop. And the first one is the processing power. It's got the AMD Ryzen AI9 chip, which is a pretty fast chip for processing video data. And all this means is it speeds up stuff like importing footage, scrubbing through timelines and exporting the final product. Second is the GPU. The model I got has the RTX 5070 GPU, which is an excellent GPU for punching through rendering videos. It provides great acceleration for video decoding and it handles complex edits like stabilization, noise reduction and transitions with ease. The GPU is also excellent for photo editing software like Lightroom and Photoshop that rely highly on AI to process images. Third is the RAM. If you're considering purchasing this laptop for video editing, I highly recommend you get the 32GB RAM model, as a minimum. This is essential for big project sizes or multitasking with different apps open and it will help making 4K and 8K video editing a breeze. It also comes with a 64GB option which is what I opted for, so if you can stretch your budget a bit, I'll probably get the 64GB option. Fourth is the OLED display. If you're colour grading videos or photos, having a colour accurate display is crucial, or you'll end up having this weird colour content that you wouldn't even know of until you upload it and view it on another display. This is an example of a video I done using my Surface Pro and honestly, it looked fine on the screen but once I uploaded it to YouTube and viewed it on my phone, it had this weird green tint to it which is absolute trash. Well, I mean most of this is kind of due to my bad editing skills so that probably played a role in the quality. The Pro Art also has a factory calibrated display, meaning when you color grade you'll be using the most color accurate display. It also has a web content setting that you can select to make sure your videos will look the same on normal TVs and phone screens. And fifth is storage. The model I have has 1TB of storage, which is pretty decent and it will take a while before you need to delete files off it. Although, you will max it out pretty quick if you're storing all your video or photo content on there. So what I tend to do is use an external SSD for all my recordings and photos and save it on that after I've done editing. This just keeps it clean in my opinion. Also. There is a spare SSD slot in the laptop and it's relatively easy to add more storage to it down the line. Just another thing I love about a Windows product. So I've been using this laptop for about 4 months now and I've had a pretty good run with it. I did start out with CapCut for all my video editing and honestly it never missed a beat. I've been filming all my content in 4K log format and uploading hour and a half long clips straight into CapCut. And it handles it pretty damn well. I haven't had to enable any video proxies yet. And if you're new to editing, a proxy just helps editing run smoothly if your laptop can't handle playback of full quality video, while having effects and edits on top of it. I have transitioned now to DaVinci Resolve and it's been handling that with ease too. I did find that in normal performance mode it did get a touch of lag on heavy layered edits, especially if you're not plugged into the charger. 
but after I opened up the settings and selected performance mode, that lag pretty much disappeared. I will note that when you're in performance mode and you're doing a complex edit, it does speed up the fan, so it gets a bit noisy, but honestly, it's not really that loud and it doesn't really annoy me at all. Okay, so this is just a sound test of what the laptop sounds like. So right now it's just idling. Um, the sound is just fans at minimal speed. Um, so if you can hear that, I'll zoom in a bit. So yeah, you can barely tell that the fans are running. I mean, it's slightly there, but not noticeable. And then I'm just going to render this video. And you'll just hear it um, pick up. Pick up the speed. So as you can hear now, it's just kicked up speed. I'd say this is probably out running at 70% fan speed. It will get louder. So as you can tell, that's max the fans running now. Getting that render going. So as you can see, not really noticeable. Video rendering is also extremely quick and it can render 10 minute video in minutes. And coming from the four hours my Surface Pro used to take, this is an absolute game changer for me. Now I've seen people's reviews saying that the keyboard does get warm when the system's doing intensive work, but honestly, I haven't found that. I'd say for my use case, the most intensive processing part would be when it comes to rendering videos. And honestly, I haven't found the keyboard get that warm at all. There's also the dial pad, which I thought was a gimmick at the time, but honestly, it's pretty handy once you get used to it. Especially for scrolling timelines or fine tuning color wheels, it's super handy. And if you don't have one of those high end mouses everyone uses, it's a game changer. I found the battery life to be pretty good. During normal use, I can easily get 12 hours out of it, but complex editing or rendering will drain the battery pretty quickly if you're not connected to a charger. Also, renders are noticeably quicker if you're connected to a charger, as it does limit the full power of the CPU and GPU when on battery. The build quality on this laptop is excellent. It feels well put together and rigid, and I haven't found any squeaks or parts that feel flimsy. The keyboard is very comfortable and the key travel is just right in my opinion. Also, I'm definitely a fan of the black and the matte black finish on this laptop looks amazing. It's definitely not that big of a fingerprint magnet like other people say and honestly I haven't had to clean it yet, it looks fine. The design does look sleek and definitely not like a gaming laptop. I feel like they definitely pulled off the minimalist design and I'm so happy they didn't ruin it with RGBs. I mean, I do love RGBs but not on a laptop. The display on this is a 4K OLED 60Hz panel, which is absolutely beautiful, and it makes for looking at content for long periods pretty easy. I do feel like it does a really good job in limiting the blue light as well. It's also got a pre-calibrated from the factory screen and has a pretty low delta E value, which means it's extremely close to real life colors. It's also got a white color gamut with 100% DCI-P3 coverage. This is the standard color space for digital cinematography. It also provides coverage for sRGB, which is the standard for web content like YouTube or Instagram, as well as Adobe RGB, which is the standard for photography print media. So in a nutshell, all this really means is that what you see on the screen is what you get in your final photo or video. The only negative thing I found with this display is the reflections. It is a really reflective panel, so in bright environments, it does suffer pretty bad which can be annoying and you quickly find yourself maxing out the brightness trying to combat it. And in outdoor environments, especially when it's sunny, I forget about it as the screen is so hard to read from all those reflections. Then there's the ports, and we'll start with the SD card reader. If you're a content creator, this is a must have, especially if you're editing on the go. It comes with an Express 7 SD card reader, which means you can expect speeds of 900 megabits per second, depending on the type of card you have, of course which is plenty quick enough even if you have 100 plus gigabyte footage you're trying to download off your cards. You also get two USB-C ports, with one of them being a USB 4 so you can easily run multiple displays, followed by two regular Type A display ports, a full HDMI port and a 3.5mm audio mic port, which is so handy for editing with wired headphones, or plug in your mic in to record audio. 
This laptop also has a propriety charger port and comes with a 200 watt charger that can charge you from 0 to 100 in about an hour and a half, which is pretty decent. You can also charge it via the USB-C port if you forget your charger or something, but it is to mention that you won't get maximum power out of the processor or GPU while charging it on USB-C, as the power delivery of the USB-C is only limited to 100 watts using this method. So I think if you're just starting out in content creation and you want a laptop that won't slow you down, this is absolutely a great choice at a pretty decent price as well, especially if you manage to find it on sale. It's definitely future proof if you get the 64 gigabyte RAM model and the RTX 5070, as this will keep up for years to come. So overall, the ProArt 16 has been a reliable, powerful laptop that's definitely saved me hundreds of hours on editing so far. And for the everyday creator starting out, I think it's a great all-rounder. I definitely see myself using this for a long time to come. And eventually, I'd like to get a monitor and just have it to plug in, because it's powerful enough to not need a dedicated PC. Anyways, if you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and follow for more content.